early Shabbat Shalom to each and all on this beautiful Friday morning. So they tell the story of these two children who were troublemakers and everyone tried to speak to them, to discipline them, but to no avail. Finally, the rabbi of the town stepped in. He approached these children. He said to them, tomorrow morning, I want to speak to you in my office. The next morning came, the first child entered the rabbi's office. The rabbi looked at him very seriously and with a deep stare, told the child, so tell me, my dear child, where is God? The child lowered his face in shame. He turned red, blue, green, and stormed out of the office. Went to his friend and he said, boy, now we're in deep trouble. The rabbi asked me, where is God? They think that God is missing and that we stole him. My friend, speaking of children, I'm reminded of the ancient Jewish custom that when a child begins to study Torah, he ought to begin from this week's portion, the portion of Vayikra, that speaks mainly about sacrifices. But obviously the question is why? First, God has his own order. He began the Torah with Bereshit, Genesis, where it says that in the heaven God created, in the beginning, sorry, God created heaven and earth. So why not follow God's order of study? Secondly, why teach the child about sacrifices, which again is the main theme of this week's portion, when we are risking boring the child with the technicalities of a subject that is no longer relevant in our day and age? Sacrifices were brought years ago, some 2,000 years ago, in the Jerusalem temple, uh, in the times of the Beit HaMikdash, but not anymore. Why not teach the child stories that can spark his curiosity and ignite his desire for learning? And the answer, my friends, I think speaks not just of the essence of this theme, sacrifices, but I think it shares with us one of the great secrets of life. Why would God instruct us to bring animal sacrifices? The answer, my friends, I believe, is because of what these sacrifices truly represent. You see, only four animals were allowed to be brought as sacrifices. Cows, bulls, goats, and sheep. Why these animals? Because these animals, as the Midrash calls them, were the pursued animals, not the pursuers. They are innocent. They are pure. They seek not to bring destruction upon the world. Quite the opposite. They seek safety and security. They are the pursued, not the pursuers. These animals reminded us and eventually reminded God as we brought those sacrifices of this quality of innocence, of purity, which is the quality that truly defines our very core. Because Judaism believes that human, human beings are inherently good. Yes, we may sin, and that's why we brought animal sacrifices. But sin does not define us. Yes, we may commit evil, but our deepest core is not evil, quite the opposite. It is pure goodness. When we brought the sacrifices, God was reminded not just of the innocence of those animals, but of the innocence of us that lies deep within our core. Then God said, yes, you sinned and this is why you bring the sacrifice, but I agree with you. You are not defined by that wrongdoing. Your inherent core is good. I will embrace you once again. And you are indeed to me now through this ex exposure of your deepest innocence. A reach nichach la'ashem, as God teaches us in this week's portion, a pleasant aroma for me and for the world. Friends, this is why children begin with the study of Torah by learning these rules about the sacrifices in this week's portion. Because as the Midrash puts it so beautifully, let the innocent come and study innocence. There is nothing more innocent in this world than children. Children are uncamouflaged. They are unfiltered. They speak with their heart. They communicate with a soul that shines right through. And that is why we teach our children the laws of innocence because they best reflect them. Why are we studying about this today? Because I believe that the coronavirus 
that has spread now havoc and destruction to the four corners of our world has forced us inward towards our family, towards our children, but dare I say, towards that inner child. And we are now facing this inner child again when it may have been lost just up until a few weeks ago in the rat races of life that distracted us, that turned us into beings that we are truly not. It is a blessing within this darkness. It is indeed a glimmer of hope within the many waves of despair that may overcome us during these tough days, during these uncertain times. By studying about the portion of Vayikra, by studying about this ancient custom where innocent children teach us and learn innocence, we too are reminded of that inner child that desires innocence, that needs our attention, that shouts to us, please be innocent again. Listen to this divine calling. Do good, be good, and spread that goodness to the entire world. I'm reminded of the story, my friends, of this Holocaust survivor who eventually moved to Borough Park, New York. And he would sit each and every morning at 7.30 a.m. at a local bus stop for about an hour, and then he would go home. He wouldn't even catch a bus. And at one point, someone approached him and said, my friend, why are you sitting here all alone each every, every, and every morning at 7.30 a.m.? for about an hour and then just returning home. What's the point? And the man says to this, this uh, questioner, he says to him, you don't understand this hour of the day from 7.30 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. brings me the most pleasure in life. He says to him, why? The Holocaust survivor says, you don't understand. I'm a Holocaust survivor. My entire family perished in the Holocaust. But when I sit here from 7.30 to 8.30 a.m. each and every morning, and watch these school buses transporting all of these children, all of these innocent children who are recommitting themselves to study, to life. For me, that's the greatest victory over Hitler. Hitler tried to squash that innocence. He tried to exterminate it. But we have prevailed. Our children, their purity, their innocence have sparked this great beauty in our world once again. Friends, I thus encourage you that as we study the laws of innocence in this week's portion that are so well reflected by those four animals, by the animal sacrifices as mentioned, we too bring our inner child to that moment of study. We listen to it. We listen to its begging to finally reconnect to our deepest core, to that core of innocence, purity and goodness. And if we can listen to it and heed its call to do good today more than yesterday, but much less than tomorrow, then we too will be creating a reach nichach la'ashem, a pleasant aroma, not just for God, not just for this world, but for ourselves. And that pleasant aroma will then no doubt spread, maybe even more quickly than this terrible COVID-19, and eventually bring healing and good health to our world, and finally usher in God's ultimate redemption. May it happen speedily. Amen. I thank you. Shabbat Shalom.